Hey you guys, um, I'm sorry I'm a little bit late starting today. Give me just a minute to share my links and I'm gonna get my page updated for you. Uh, today we're talking about indexing, um, just regular indexing as well as edge indexing and we'll talk about that. But um, first let me get these links shared out and I'll get the post updated with all that info that I normally give you guys. Um, all of the uh, all of the links to everything that you guys normally ask for. I like to put those up in the beginning so that there aren't as many questions later on. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm a little out of sorts today. My family had kind of some weird, really sad news, so I won't get into it, but um, if I seem off today, that's why, and I apologize in advance. Um, okay, I need to get my links up for you. But I am really excited about today's topic because I'm sharing my very, very favorite tip for journaling and it's my favorite way of staying organized and I know most people that um, who have tried this method say that it's a lifesaver. So I'm excited to share it with you guys and um, I think you'll end up liking it. Okay. Um, I wish I could do all of this stuff ahead of time, but unfortunately... I can't do it till we're live, so um, let me get the link for you. Oops. How is everybody? Hi, Elizabeth. Glad you made it. I didn't work out today. Yesterday's workout was great. It was a killer, too, let me tell you. Um, but today, I kind of took it easy, and I didn't, I didn't work out today. So um, that was that was good. But um, I have my coffee here and it's keeping me going. So you guys can go ahead and grab your coffee. You've got time to grab a coffee and grab a friend who loves to journal and get them in here with you so you have somebody to chat with about it later. I always have more fun when I have a friend with me. <laughs> so I have so many exciting things to work on today too after this video is done. So I'm excited for the day. But um, okay, so I also, have some extra links to share with you guys today and I wanted to make sure that I grabbed those because you're gonna have questions about the things that I'm using. I know you will. Um, uh, paper trimmer, okay. So, here's what we're talking about today. If you guys are new to the series, let me go ahead and catch you up. Oh, thank you, Amy. <laughs> Hi, Carol, glad you made it. Hi, Beth. Dawn's here. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Alice. How are you? I, Alice, I got your email, too, about the vault, so I think you're good to go, right? Um, and I was going to tell you guys about some of the printables that are in the vault because I actually went back and updated some things because when I checked it last night, I really was not happy with the quality of um, the way that the printables were coming out in the vault. So if you go back and look at them now, I've updated and tweaked some things and the quality should be much, much better on those printables because, um, yeah, I don't know what happened before, but when I was making them before, I must have had a box checked that uh, I didn't want checked and then you guys ended up with kind of some some weird pixelation and things like that on the, the printables. So I've updated it and you guys should be good to go there. Um, if you've tried to access the vault recently, like I just finished doing it before we started this live. So, um, yeah, the, the printables should look a lot better now. Okay. I just posted some links for you guys along with, um, all of my, I think I put the, put up the link to the blog in case you guys need that again. Um, cause we always have one or two people who are kind of new to the series who aren't, aren't as familiar with where everything is. So I've got my blog and my book up there on the header for it. And then um, underneath, in just the regular comments section, I posted some, um, some materials that we're going to be using today for you. So, oh, thanks, Amy. Amy's always, Amy's always saying nice things to me. I like having Amy in here. She makes me happy. Okay, so let's get started. So yesterday, um, we ended up making a reading journal printable. So I made kind of a template for you, and I drew it with you guys just because a reading page is a collection that I use on an annual basis. So a lot of you may not use a reading, I mean a reading list or a book to be read list or something like that on an annual basis, but you may have other things that you do on an annual basis, like you may have movies you want to see or places you want to go visit. So that's the only reason that the books to read was the collection that I did yesterday, just because that's one I keep on an annual basis. 
My other collections, I'm probably just going to be working through throughout the year. And I know I um, I shared this video, the link to this live video in the um, bullet journal for beginners group. Um, and I know that some of you guys had questions about how to actually use like the monthly pages and the weekly pages and how that kind of folds into my routine. Hi Mindy, glad you made it. Um, and so I'll have, um, I'm going to discuss a little bit of that tomorrow. I got a couple emails from people saying, Hey, we really want to know the monthly pages. You know, can you walk us through the monthly pages? I will. Um, and so I think tomorrow we're going to discuss a little bit more about that, about how, um, how I use the monthly pages and the weekly pages and how kind of things flow together. Hi Kayla, glad you made it. So um, we'll finish up getting this 2018 journal set up and then the next thing I have to do really is just getting set up for January. So um, so let me go ahead and pull you guys around here and we can get started and I'll show you what we're doing. Um, I also want, um, I want to do one more plug too for the Journaling Sisters um, journaling group that I'm going to be doing on Sunday. And so I'm going to post the link here for you guys just to get some more information. But um, it's run by Schwen Butler and she has so much experience in counseling and she's doing this whole self-care retreat, journaling retreat, which I'm really, really excited about because I think that it, I think it fits so well with our community and the time of year is really perfect for it. So let me go ahead and share that link with you guys one more time. Um, and I just con I just dro dropped it in the comments below. If you're watching this on YouTube, I will um, I'll also put it in the comment description below on the replay. So it won't be live on YouTube, obviously, but um, I'll drop it in the comments below so you guys can have a peek at it as well. And um, I'm also gonna have some information coming out in the newsletter. So if you're a Page Flutter Vault member and you get my newsletter on a monthly basis, I'll have some more info on this coming in the newsletter. So don't worry about, um, don't worry too much about it right now, but you can get, you can check it out and um, get familiar with it. And then hopefully I'll see you guys on Sunday in the retreat with me. Um, I know she's got it capped at 30 people. Oh, I'm not gonna my lights. Oh, good save. Okay, let me get the camera up. It's always a little bit of a, there's, there's a technique to getting this whole live video thing set up. <laughs> Let me tell you guys. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so I think I've got everything linked for you guys. I've got the big announcements up. So I think we're good there. Uh, okay. You guys see? We good? All right. And I'm going to kind of turn this way so you can see what we're doing. So, okay. So what we're doing today is we're going to talk about indexing, which is obviously um, a technique that... If you use the bullet journal system, that's um, a real key part of the bullet journal system. If you use another type of journaling um, or another style or um, or just your, with your regular planning, or if you just keep a notebook for your general personal use, like an all-around journal that doesn't necessarily follow one of those systems, you still may benefit from using an index of some kind. So this is kind of how my indexing looks. Um, I've tweaked it over the years. And in my latest journal, it's going to look something like this because this is how I like doing things. So um, this is my current index. Now I do sort of a minimal indexing system because I don't feel like coming back and indexing every single page in my journal. To me, it's just a waste of time and I feel like if you bookmark everything, then you can't find anything because what, what was the point, right? So I only index the really important things and then that kind of helps me get my bearing. So um, I index the early pages in my journal. So my first, you know, my opening pages, my annual planning, my birthdays and holidays, uh, important addresses and things like that. Then I do my months in bold and then I indent everything under a given month. So you guys might not be able to see it, but if you were here with me, you'd be able to tell, I actually have a pencil line that I've drawn down um, right here in this column. And that helps me just kind of guide my indent when I'm sub-indexing something under a monthly header, if that makes sense. So um, that way, if I have important pages or collections that occurred during a given month, like I made this Huga page. Well, in October, I was really starting to think Huga because we're heading into fall and winter and I really wanted to cozy up my home and my routine. So that fit 
I mean that it just naturally occurred in October and then I've got it indexed under October. So this is how my index is going to occur in the new journal as well because I'm really happy with the way that this system has been working for me. Um, and then I just put the beginning page. So if it's a multi-page collection, I don't necessarily say that it goes from, you know, like I don't say that October goes from page 36 to page 67 because it feels redundant to me. Be just That's just how I do it. Um, I've also heard that if um, this technique, I learned this from Alice, who's one of my contributors. She blogs over at the Geeky, the Geeky Burrow, and she um, she contributes for me on the site from time to time. And she, when she numbers a new notebook, like if her notebook doesn't come with pre-numbered pages, she only numbers the odd pages. So then she would always, but she can still use, you know, she'll still have those page numbers, one, two, three, four, five. It's just that she do, she only needs to number one side and then she automatically knows where the page numbers are. So that just a little shortcut that I figured I'd mention if you're having to number your own notebook in order to make your index work. So um, today I'm working with a notebook that already is numbered, so that's not really a concern for me, but um, if you're having to number yours by hand, that's maybe something to consider, is just number the odd pages. Okay, so, um, and just for a quick count, why don't you guys go ahead and comment below if you do keep an index, if you intend to keep an index and maybe don't keep up with it, or if, you're, if you uh, don't keep an index at all. I'm kind of curious as to what kind of system you guys are using and how, how indexing kind of plays into your life. And by the way, I just want to <laughs> mention, there are two proper ways to talk about multiple indexes. There's indexes and there's indices, and they're both correct. It doesn't matter. Pick the one that you like. I just, I, <laughs> I've heard that question kind of tossed around, which one's correct. It doesn't matter. English is weird. There are many, many ways to say it. Indexes, indices, indexes. Yeah, however you like, whatever floats your boat. So Mary says she uses indexing, Natalie says she does, and hers is similar to mine, Alice, good. Okay, so a lot of you guys are already familiar with um, with indexings, even though, yeah, maybe maybe we have good intentions and then we fall behind, I hear ya. Hi CJ, glad you made it. Um, oh, cool, you're you're headed to the, in Wyoming, I've been up there, to that Air Force Base, very cool. Intend to index. Robbie says, I intend to index, but don't always get to. Dawn says she doesn't currently index, but she's interested. So, okay, so th there's a good mix then of you guys, and we'll talk about that. The next thing I want to talk about, so um, we'll go. I'll go ahead and get that set up. Um, this similar system, I'm, that's what I'm going to set up in the new notebook. The other thing I want to show you guys is edge indexing, and this is my very favorite way to keep my notebook organized. So clearly I use a bound notebook. If you don't use a bound notebook and you can move your pages around, then this may not be for you. If you like to use tabs to separate sections and you have removable pages like in a ring bound system or a disc bound system, then you, this may not necessarily apply to you because you could separate your collections by section. Hi Carmen from Peru, how are you? I spent some time in Peru. I was in Peru for about five months. Um, working down there and I loved it. I was in Lima and we went up to Machu Picchu and saw the llamas and everything and went to um, Oaxaca which was really neat. So um, okay so here we go. Um, so this is um, my edge index um, and I showed you guys this a little bit yesterday because I mentioned that we were going to talk about it. So I have basically color-coded um, and I've basically color coded different areas of my life and I'm going to do my categories a little bit differently this year. But I've color coded them and those actually act as guides. This card is going to act as a guide so when I come through to put my sticker on, I've got all my stickers here and I have linked to, to these stickers on Amazon and the pack is huge so I bought it two years ago and I'm still using the same pack. So um, yeah, it's it's been it's earned its keep for sure so then you can just use these dots then to line up if like if this page had to do with health then I would just stick that sticker right there and fold it over the edge like that and then when I flip through I'll have all of my health pages marked in that manner so um, so I don't necessarily have to reorder the pages but I'll still be able to see what category they belong in at a glance which is really nice especially if I need to flip through like my monthly pages I have here listed and 
I can flip through real fast. If I need to go back to a given month, then I have all of my months marked and I can flip through them real fast and say, ooh, what month did that happen in? I can't remember, what month was that? What month was that? You know, and I can do it pretty quickly without having to go digging through the index in the front of the, the notebook. So that's kind of handy to have. Um, and I have really enjoyed um, using this system and I'm gonna continue to use it, although I'm thinking about reorganizing just a little bit the way that I've sorted out my categories. The other thing that I did poorly in the past was that um, I created an edge, an edge color code and then I didn't necessarily use that color code through the entire journal and that was a mistake because then I would have orange sometimes for blogging and then pink sometimes for blogging and then you know blue for family sometimes but then sometimes I was using purple for family. Anyway, it was a mess when it came to the pens. So this year I want to standardize that and use the same color code that's on my card here I want to use in the colors of pens that I might use somewhere else in the journal. I don't do a lot of color coding with ink but um, every now and then it comes up and I want to make sure that that's sort of standardized. Um, oh, so Beth said she used washi tape. That's another, that's another way of doing this too, is some people will use different patterned washi tapes instead of stickers. And that's a great way to do it. There's, you know, or they'll um, do the entire edge of the page with a different colored washi tape. So that's definitely an option. I like this system with the stickers just because it's offset. So even if I don't have the right color, you could even, you could, this system would work in black and white. You don't have to do it in color. You could do black and white and just based on where it occurs on the page, then you could see which category it belongs in. So um, you've probably seen that in dictionaries and reference books. A lot of times they'll use that system and they use it in black and white. Um, Amy, these stickers are not necessarily removable, but I have been able to remove them without damaging my page. I don't think they're advertised as removable, but um, but yeah, they, they stay on my page, but I've also been able to remove them without any issues when when the occasion came up. So yeah, like the, and the other thing I like about this, so if you were to use washi tape along the whole edge of the page, first of all, it makes it look really cool and I really like the way it looks. However, one downside to it is that you can't categorize a page in multiple categories if you do that because you've used up your entire edge. With these small stickers, if I have something that belongs in long-term and family, then I can, I can actually categorize that page twice without any issues. It doesn't affect anything. Um, so, or three times or four times, it doesn't matter. You can add it to as many categories as you need to because you've allotted a space for each one. So that's kind of the neat thing about this system. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and show you how I make one of these. Now, this was a paper that I got from JB Welly. Um, and that's where I get a lot of my notebooks from. It's just one of my favorite stationary companies. I trust them, I like their, their customer service and I've been using them and ordering them from them for a long time. So, um, and I believe I actually have a link to them that I'll share with you guys. Um, but this is, I got my Rodia Goal Book from them and there's a link to the Goal Book which is this one and it's a soft cover. But um, that's where I got that. They also carry all the Leuchterms and they carry um, they carry the, uh, what's it called? It's um, the, the Blackwing, the Blackwing notebooks, which are really neat. I really like those too. They carry a lot of those. So anyway, um, but this notebook I ordered from them, this was a blue Lloyd Derm uh, dotted and it came in this gorgeous paper. So I couldn't bring myself to throw out the paper. So I ended up saving it and I used it as a backer to my card which was really fun. And I actually found this matching washi tape in my stash, which was kind of nice. So I'll just show you guys how I do that card really quickly. It's not complicated. It's actually very easy. And it's a, you can use this for your key. You can use it for important references. Like some people will use these in the middle of their journal, these little flip out cards for um, important, it, like important phone numbers or, uh, or things that they use really often. I've thought about putting the colors, the hex codes for the colors I use on my website. I've thought about putting them on a card because I reference them every single time I make a graphic. I go back to the, the hex colors that I use on a regular basis because I like for my colors to be standard 
as I'm making things for the blog. So anyway, there, there are a lot of different um, applications for one of these flip out cards, but today we're just gonna focus on using it as an edge label key because I think that I'll show you guys how to make one and you'll, yeah, you'll be fine. Um, okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna need is some white cardstock, and I just happen to have a stash of it that stays in my drawer here. And I meant to get it out ahead of time so you guys wouldn't have to hear me rifling through my drawer, but um, you know what, this is my real life, guys. This is what it's actually like. Okay, so, um, so I've got this pack of long cardstock that I got, I don't know, I think I probably got it at Target. Um, and I'll have to trim it just a little bit because it's not quite the right size, but um, this works pretty well for these little cards. So I have my Fiskars trimmer, and I think I linked this up above for you guys. It's just a paper trimmer. It's nothing fancy, but um, I had another one that was smaller by Fiskars that I had years and years ago, and I used it for a long time. And then I finally upgraded to this one just because my little guy just couldn't, he just couldn't hang anymore. He couldn't keep up with me. So, um, and we're going to end up putting this card in the very back of the journal. So this is where it's going to go. And I want to line it up so that um, I have a gusseted pocket in the back of this notebook. This is a Scribbles That Matter. And the pocket um, is kind of fabric on the sides, but it, it folds into itself. So, you know, you kind of, you can lift it up. But I, I'm actually going to want to tuck... I'm, I'm gonna want to, Amy says, now I have a cry cut. Yes, I do have a cry cut now. I'm excited about it. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, I appreciate that. She says, this is a good video for beginners. Good, I'm glad. Um, okay, so I'm gonna line this card up just with the edge of the gusseted pocket. I don't want it to extend beyond that because when I wrap my tape around, it's gonna catch. So I wanna make sure it's just really lined up nice and even right there. I'm going to grab a ruler out of my drawer here. Let's see if I can grab a ruler without knocking you guys over. All right, I did it. Okay. So <clears throat> then I'm just going to kind of draw a light pencil line right along where my pot, my pocket ends there. Um, here's a pencil. And I can do this more than once if I need to. And then I'm just going to trim it with my trimmer. Um, you can use scissors if you want. I'm just lazy, and I like the trimmers. They're just super easy. Okay, then um, I'm just going to check it and see how it works. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So my tape will be able to extend. And then this might be just a little bit wide because I need a little bit of room on this side where my tape is going to go. Um, but instead of cutting it, I think we're just going to fold it because it will give me a little tab to fold down and then when this folds out, it's it's actually gonna stay on the journal, okay? It'll make sense when we're done, okay? Hi, Yvonne, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Catherine from, oh, from Germany, wonderful. Hi, Paula. Wow, lots of people just popped in. Okay, so I think I'm going to fold about, um, probably about a half an inch. Um, I thought I had a, yeah, I did have a ruler. I knew it. I knew I brought a ruler out here. And I'm just going to kind of use my ruler to, to guide my fold. Um, so my ruler is clear. And it has these little, this is a Westcott craft ruler. But you can use any ruler you have. But it has these little grid lines on it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not on the camera. So um, it has these little grid lines on it. And I can use that to kind of line things up and make sure that they're even. I got the ruler on Amazon, Yvonne. Um, and I can link it for you guys if you want. It's really nothing fancy. And to be honest, sometimes I'm not happy with the way that the edge is beveled. But it still has been one of the best things I've been able to find to use for these types of crafty things. Um, so I've got too many journals. Too, too much on my desk here. Too much on my desk. Let's let's make some room. What do you guys say? Um, I'll move this stuff back. Okay. So I've sort of given myself a little fold there. And I'll fold the rest of this down and crease it real well. Um, and Yvonne, just give me just a second and I'll grab the link for the ruler for you if you're curious about it. Um, like I said, it's really nothing fancy. And I'll show you what I like about it and what I don't like about it when I share this because I want you guys to know before you order it. Um, I still would order it again. However, I want you guys to know because you may have different standards than I do. 
oops okay it's called a Westcott craft ruler 12 inch let me grab this for you guys And sometimes with these Westcott's, they have a number on them and you have to look at the number because they come in all kinds of different configurations. This one is a B70. So that also will help you know that you're getting the right one because there are different widths of these 12 inch rulers. Some of them are real skinny. Um, and so you wanna make sure you get the right one. For some reason, I'm having a hard time finding it. There we go, I got it now. Okay, and I will text, I will get the, I'll send you guys the link in the comments below. Um, and if you're on YouTube, I always go back and add the, um, the links for you guys below as well. So here comes the link for the Westcott ruler. There it is. Okay, it's up, Yvonne. All right, so, um, but I like it just because it's clear. So here's what I like about it. I like it because it's clear and it has these grid lines and that's great for when you're on a page and you're trying to line something up and you can tell if things are crooked, you can see through it. What I don't like about it is that the, the edges are beveled, meaning that they're undercut a little bit. So if you laid this ruler down and tried to draw a line into it like this, you would end up going under the ruler and it's got kind of a rough cut. So you end up getting like a, it's it's almost like you know when you're driving on the highway and you hit those those side bumps because you're about to go off the road it's like a like all the way down the side so that's what I don't like about it is I feel like the bevel could have been a little bit cleaner but um but I've just learned then to hold my pencil or my pen straight up and down perpendicular to the paper before I draw my line and then I don't have any problems with that. But that's just a little hint and those are the issues that I have with it. But for the most part, this has been a very good ruler. It's flexible. I ha haven't had any problems with it breaking or chipping or anything. And it has this nice center point that you can use and then it's numbered outward from that. So like this is zero, these are both one, these are both two, these are both three, and so forth. So if you're trying, could you guys see that? I'm sorry, I might have been off camera. So, um, Yes, Amy, both edges are slanted. So I've got a zero here in the middle, and then I've got two ones, two twos, and then they move out from there, two threes. So if you're trying to center something, you can count, you can you know that you'll go to like one and one, or two and two. So that kind of makes it easy to center things. So that's part of what's nice about it. I also have the six inch version, version of this, which fits nicely in the back of the journal, like in the pocket, because this is obviously too big to take out with you in public. So um, anyway, that's that. Enough about the ruler though. <laughs> I, I could go off forever about supplies and I know you guys care about supplies, but, um, and, and I do too, but they're also, sometimes we overemphasize their importance. Um, in the journaling community. Really, it's not about what you have. It's just kind of about how you use it. You find tools that make you happy and then just go, just go. Okay, so we're gonna use a little bit of washi tape, which I thought I got out ahead of time. Let's see what we have here. That's my oil from yesterday. I have fun mustaches um, that I really got those to tease my husband because he does this, like in the military, and I mean, they do it, it's not just the military, but the military especially, they do this like mush, mustache march and Movember and they all like grow their ridiculous, ridiculous mustaches. And so I got that to tease him and I haven't had an occasion to use it yet, but we'll see. We've got lots of different types of tape here we can choose from. So you guys can help me pick because um, I have lots of options. But we're not gonna tape them down yet because um, before I forget, we're gonna do some fun colored paper on the back of it. And um, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do that because now I'm forget I'm forgetting my steps. See, I guess. Oops! And I knocked you guys sideways. Oh no! Okay. Okay. Um, I think we're good. Okay. Carol says she's got the six inch one. Okay. So when I made this, um, let me show you guys this one. So what I did with this one was I trimmed the card. I trimmed the card after I folded it so that the back paper would actually be the part that I taped to the journal. So can you see that? Like this white card is actually 
Hi, Rudia, how are you? From New York, awesome. Um, so I, I actually just pasted the white cardstock to this pretty paper and put the pretty paper attached to the journal. So that's what we're gonna do. So I've, I've created a little fold here on my cardstock and we know that my paper is gonna have to be at least that big, my pretty paper that we're gonna put behind it. And I'm actually gonna make it even a little bit longer so I have more room to take to the journal. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's pick a paper and then we'll pick a washi tape that kind of complements it. Um, and this is, just to be clear guys, the whole washi tape and the pretty paper, this is all optional. You don't have to feel any pressure to do this. If you just wanna tape a card into your journal and go, the function is still the same. Like, it's perfect. Um, uh oh, what's wrong, Yvonne? She says, oh no, <laughs> something's wrong. Hi, Sharon from North Carolina, awesome. I used to live in South Carolina and I love it. We still have a house there and I keep hoping that someday we'll go back because it was like my, my little Southern Haven with a wraparound porch and it was so beautiful. So I have all of these papers that I got from JB Welly. Would you guys look at these? I can't bring myself <laughs> to throw them away. I have a problem, I hoard paper. I swear, it's such a problem. So I have this pretty gold, and keeping in mind that my journal is mint, so I'm kinda gonna look for a color that's gonna complement this. So I've got this mint, I've got this black with gold, marble, floral, lots of flowers. Um, there are so many cool papers in here. Every time I order something from him or get something in the mail from him, it's always wrapped in a, in a, a new paper. It's really neat. Ooh, this one's kind of fun. Look at this one. A lot of these are fun. Let's look at these. Okay, because I have, I have so many of them in here though. They're, I mean, they're just tons. This could take hours if you guys helped me pick all of these. Look at, I've got this big purple, this green, this blue. I'm sort of thinking this purple could be cool. So let's look at some of these. You guys can help me help me vote, okay? Um, so I've got this purple with gold. I've got this one, which is a lot of fun, and it's kind of got a little bit of mint in it, which would look really nice. I've got this one that's sort of a bright and, you know, kind of a geometric pattern kind of thing going on. So um, the bright yellow one, yeah, Amy, the bright yellow one would pop. A lot of people like the gold. <laughs> Amy says she hoards beautiful things like that too. I just can't bring myself to throw them out. They're so pretty. The plum with the bright flowers, you guys like that one? That looks really cool, doesn't it? With the bright pink? Let's do that one. Okay, here we go. So, I've got, the nice thing about this one is it's also sort of folded already because I folded it for something else, but um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this a little bit and I want to leave it long enough that um, I'll have enough room to tape my card to it and then to tape this into the into the journal. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim it with my Fisker trimmer. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of use my card as a guide. It doesn't have to be precise, really. Um, it's just sort of a guide. I think I'll probably end up leaving a little bit of a border so that I can see the purple behind the white card. That'll be kind of nice. So this Fisker cutter, one of the things I like about it that my old cutter didn't have is that this one actually has a wire that runs right where the blade would go. So you can see where you're gonna cut, which I really like. My old one didn't have that and I kind of had to guess. So um, can you guys see what I'm doing? I might move you over just a little bit so you can see better. Okay, is that better? Okay. Here we go, here we go. Let's get it done. All right, so now I can see where that's gonna get cut. I'm just gonna cut that guy off, okay? And you can kind of go back with your scissors afterwards and clean it up if you don't get a clean cut the first time. Sometimes with these soft papers, this is a real malleable kind of, almost like a pressed cotton paper it feels like. Um, but sometimes you don't get a super clean cut with those and you can just go back with your scissors and touch it up. I'm just gonna leave it because I sort of think it's a neat, I sort of think it's a neat aesthetic when I get that sort of torn, not torn, but you know, like that rough deckled edge almost, it's kind of neat. Okay, 
then I'm just still gonna use my card as a guide here. I haven't glued anything down. I'm just holding it lightly so that I can see where things are gonna go. And this is gonna work out well because I think this is gonna end up right over a fold. Okay, that's good. And I'll trim the top here just a little bit so that because it's a little bit long. And I may need to trim things again because I didn't account for the paper when I measured it against the journal. That's okay. You can always come back and kind of trim things down and look at them. So I like having that purple outline on the back of it. All right. So that's a little bit wide for my journal. So I'm actually going to um, trim the purple down and then I'll trim the white card a little bit too. So let me go ahead and do that real fast. And you guys, you guys can see how that would work. You would just sit there trimming it basically until you got the width that you wanted. So go ahead and do that real fast. I might have had one too many cups of coffee this morning. I'm shaking a little bit. <laughs> that happens. Do you guys do that? Do you guys get carried away with your morning coffee? Because I do. Oh, I love it. I love coffee. I can't say no to it. All right, I'm going to turn this around and straighten up this cut just a little bit because I got it crooked. There we go. That's good. Now I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to cut off this fold because that's where our card is actually going to fold all the way over um, to go inside the journal. So I'm just going to kind of make a little bit of a perforation here in my paper so I can see where it's going to go. So Brad says, um, I mostly use my journal for school, tracking habits, moods, and things like that. Um, how can I get into using my journal more? That's a really good question. I don't know if I've ever gotten that one before. Um, I think for one thing, um, a lot of times people pick up journaling because it's kind of a way to stay organized. It's a planner system. Um, and I think starting to treat your journal as an old friend is a good way to open up to it in different ways. So, um, you know, maybe use it for self-discovery. Maybe give yourself a weekly writing time where you sit down with your journal and you just write in it. Whether that's, you know, for free association or if you actually have some kind of self-discovery prompt in mind. Um, if you want to record important events. I would say start with once a week because if you do too much then you get overwhelmed and it becomes a chore. But if you start with maybe once a week and set aside a time when you're going to use your journal for something personal, something that's important to you. Um, maybe you're trying to learn a skill um, or if you just want to do self-discovery like I mentioned then that's another good way and then I think slowly you'll start to discover new ways that you can use your journal let me measure this one more time before I glue it because we don't want to glue and then have issues yeah so I need to trim it just a little bit more good thing I checked right um, yeah, hopefully that answered your question though, um, as far as using your journal in new and different ways. Um, I think the biggest thing is to maybe get out of the habit of thinking of it as a planner. It can be your planner for sure. I use mine mostly as a planner, um, but I use it for a lot of other things as well. So hopefully that helps maybe help you get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Very good question. Good questions today. Okay, how are we doing here? How am I doing on time? Oh, I'm fine. Okay. How's that look? You guys happy with that? I think I'm happy with that. And it's a it's just about the same width as my journal. It's not gonna extend over the pages, it's not gonna extend too far over the pocket. So I think we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down. I'm actually gonna put the glue on the card, not the paper. This paper is kind of soft. So you're going to want to um, put the put it right on the cardstock that you're using. And I guess you don't really have to use cardstock. I like it just because it's nice and it's stiff. Okay, so this glue that I'm using is just a Tombow Mono Permanent Adhesive Tape. It's not really glue. I don't care for glue in my journal. I've tried a lot of different ones and I just haven't found one that I've been able to make peace with. So um, I've kind of gone back to these dry line adhesives Hopefully I didn't just run out. I did, I just ran out. That's okay. 
I can refill it. So yeah, I've sort of taken to these um, because they don't make a mess. I can throw them in my purse. I can, I can use them, you know, how I want. And they're really easy to use. So I say that, and now, of course, because I'm live, I won't be able to change the adhesive. <laughs> I have another one. I think I do. That's always how it goes, isn't it? Everything works until you go live on Facebook and then everything just falls apart. Okay. So I can't find my refills right now. So here's what else we're going to use. This is Extra Strength Permanent Bond Craft Glue. And this is also a good option, I guess. It's kind of a stick. And it's a permanent bond, so it's not... Um, it's not like that regular school glue that you're going to find. And so this is really the only other thing that I've found that I like. I don't care for liquid adhesives. I've tried a few of them, and I really haven't been happy with them. So we'll use this. The, really, the, the tape is my favorite. You can tell because I just ran out of it. So, um, And I know I've got some refills kind of buried in the bottom of my desk, but um, I won't be able to get to them right now because my tripod is blocking them. So, Okay. And then we'll just kind of line it up on the card until it looks more or less straight and press it down. Okay, so I've got my card. Um, and then when I go to tape it into the journal with the washi tape, I will um, get some of this trash out of the way. Okay. Then I'll end up taping this down. Don't try to tape it. I think the first time I did these, I did it backwards and I was trying to flip it all wrong. Like I had taped it like this and it was flipping in and it was, it was a mess. So you want to, you want to make sure that you can flip it out like that. So I know, oh my gosh, where'd all these viewers came from? Like everybody just flooded into here. Hi guys. If you're just joining us, we are making, um, a flip out card for edge indexing in our journals. And this is my favorite technique for, um, for staying organized in my journal. So, um, okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure that my, my dots are nice and even. So, I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to give myself a little bit of room for a header. You don't really need a header on this. It, I mean, you know it's your edge index, right? But I like it to put like a little color code there. I like the way that looks. And then um, I'm going to make a spot for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me check my categories real fast because here were the categories I've used in the past. I've used health, family, reading and writing, blog, finance, home, monthly, personal, and long term. So um, I'm pretty happy with those. The only thing that I would want to do is I actually want to change it so that long term is up here. I want to kind of rearrange the order of them. So um, now I've actually I've actually used this system before, so I don't I can use my old card as a way of lining up with my new one. If you're starting from scratch, then you may need to take some time just to figure out your spacing. And I'm just gonna do a light pencil line and that's just gonna help me stay, just keep my lines even as I'm making this card. Um, you don't have to do that, but it's it helps me. Um, but especially if this is your first time making one, you may want to take some time to make sure that your dots are evenly spaced just because it'll save you some annoyance as you're going through the rest of the year. If you go to put a, if you go to put a dot in your journal, it'll bug you every time if your dots are all crooked. At least it would me. It would bug me every time. So, um, okay. So there's that. So I think I'm going to start with, um, go ahead and do my, my labels here. You guys ready? So I'm, I like writing my, my card out before I put it in the journal because once I put it in here, it goes crazy. Like my writing is all over the place, right? I can't write on the edge. It's a mess. So I'm just going to wait and I'm going to write my card out here. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, Dawn, if you don't know what your categories are at this point, you can wait. You may not know. If it's your first time using this system, then you don't have to feel like you have to put all of your categories on right away. I've used this system a lot, so I'm pretty familiar with the categories that I like to use, but you definitely could come back in later. And don't forget that you can always, you can also adapt this on the fly. Like if you have one or two categories that you already know, just put those three or four categories on and leave the bottom blank. And then you can always add those in as you're going. And, you know, backdate 
your journal, update it. It's really not a big deal if you don't know 100% all the categories that you're going to use. So for today, let's just do one or two. Um, I won't do all of mine, just so that we can kind of see how it goes. Um, and this is going to be my color code. So let's do some, let's do some fun loopy lettering. I always get really quiet when I'm doing my letters. <laughs> like I'm afraid I'm gonna mess up. It doesn't matter if I do, right? Mistakes are just, just mistakes. They're not that big of a deal. Here we go. There, color code. And then I think I'll do like a fun, let's do this. Do some colored dots underneath. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. I don't really have a plan for it as far as the colors. That's all right, we don't need a plan. I'm just having fun with this one. I'm just doing lots of different colors here. And these are my Tombow Twin Tones, and I have both the pastel and the brights. Um, and I've been really happy with them, just because they have two different widths on them so I can use the same color for different things and I have a fine tip and a bigger tip so that was my green let's go with yellow gold whatever you want to call it okay and then maybe a peach okay we're done there so that's kind of a cool header for it and then I can go ahead and add oops I didn't put a cap on that one and then I can go ahead and add my dots. So um, I remember remember when I talked about I didn't really think about my color code enough last time as to which colors I was going to use, but um, I think I'm just going to reorder them a little bit and maybe change a couple colors around. And then I'm going to assign pen colors based on this color code and I'll use it throughout the journal. So that's the plan. That's the plan, guys. Um, I try not to put two colors that seem the exact same right next to each other. I try to kind of break those up just because it helps me kind of stay organized a little bit better. All right, and we'll do um, a green and a yellow and an orange okay. and blue. I know they're not really in like a rainbow order here, but like I said, I'm kind of doing that on purpose because I don't want to have any color confusion with dots that are you know, immediately adjacent to one another. So, so that might mean that I have to rearrange kind of the way they are if I don't like a certain color for a certain task or, or something like that. Okay, I've already got a yellow, I need a light green, and then I'll do one more. So you can leave these dots kind of open if you don't know what you're gonna use them for. Um, like if you don't, if you don't have that many categories that you really want to keep track of, then just leave them open and then you'll have that color available to assign to something else as you're moving through the journal, if that makes sense. Um, let me make sure my, hi Gina, glad you made it. Hi Veronica from Sweden. Yay. Ashley, okay Ashley, if you scroll up in the comments, I have linked the dots up in the comments. So um, let me see if I can find it and I'll try to pin it to the top for you so you don't have to scroll through everybody's comments, okay? Um, because I know that that can be kind of hard to find them all. Oops, and I don't see it. Here, I'll just share it again. I'll just share it again for you guys. So these are the ones that I use, and I just dropped it in the comments down below. So, um, and I bought them on Amazon years ago, 
Um, and I still am using the same pack because it was a huge pack. It came like this and I have all these sheets. And then what I ended up doing, because the sheets are too big to fit in the back of the journal, is I just cut them in half. I just cut right down between the dots and stuck those sheets in the back of my notebook so that I could label on the go, if that makes sense. Um, okay. Let me just catch up on the comments so I'm not missing any important questions. Okay. Hi, Maisie. How are you? Glad you made it. Um, okay. So let's keep moving. Um, if you guys are new to this series, what we're doing is we're doing um, a setup for my 2018 journal and I've been taking you guys through page by page. I didn't do a flip through yet today, but I'll do the flip through at the very end. How's that? And you guys can see kind of what we've done so far. And then if you want to catch up on the old videos, you can go to my blog, go to pageflutter.com and I have a section on the main menu called Plan Vember and each post has the video embedded so you can go back and watch every single one okay so this first category I'm going to do um, oh that's way too fine let's do a point five so this first category is going to be long-term pages The next one is going to be monthly pages. I find it very, very handy to know exactly where my monthly pages are. Um, I'm surprised at how often I have a question about when something happened and I have to go back look, looking through my schedule to see when it occurred. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is going to be, um, let's do yellow can be home. Yellow can be home. next one is going to be orange and I'm going to use that for the blog and that's page flutter okay and the next one is this pretty blue let's make that family the next one's purple and we'll make that finances so I basically assigned one of my favorite colors to one of my least favorite things. <laughs> Maybe to take the edge off of it, right? Um, and then I might have, let's do um, reading and writing. That's like reading and creative writing. Reading plus writing, which is something I, I love both. And they sort of go hand in hand because if you don't read, you won't be able to write, right? And then when I read, it inspires me to want to write. Okay. Um, what else do I need here? Um, I think that's probably good enough for now. Oh no, let's do health on this pretty green. And then I'm gonna leave one open because last year I had one that was just called personal, but my whole journal is personal, so who am I kidding? I'm never gonna actually categorize something as personal in my personal journal. You know what I mean, it's a little bit. So I'm just going to leave that open in case I have another category that comes up that I want to use. Then I'll come back and erase my pencil lines here. And they erase real easily. No issues. No smearing um, with this pen that I'm using. The pen I used was a Tombow mono drawing pen that I got from TombowUSA.com. Um, and they were kind of hard to find on there. I'm not sure why. I might just give you guys the link because, um, let me see, where is it? Yeah, here's the link for it because they were kind of hard to find on the website. I actually had to use the search function to find them when I got them. So I just dropped it for the, the Tombow Mono drawing pens. So there you go. Um, all right. So I've erased all my pencil lines. I've got my dots. Um, in place the way I like them. I've got everything glued onto this beautiful paper that I'm gonna love looking at when I open my notebook. And now I just need to pick a washi tape and get it taped into the notebook, right? So one thing you can also do if you want things to just be a little bit more secure is to run a dab of glue or um, some tape on the back side of this and then you'll tape it in with washi tape to make it more secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now.
I'm just gonna take my glue stick since my tape ran out and I'm just gonna run it on the back of this. Okay. And make sure your card is opening the right direction. Okay, and so I'm just gonna fold it down like that. I'm gonna slip it in here to the side of the notebook and press it down. So that's good. All right, now I'm gonna come back with my washi tape. And the, the nice thing about putting it like this is it's not gonna affect the function of your pocket at all. Because I'm gonna show you guys how to wrap the ends so that it doesn't interfere with the way your pocket opens, okay? Make sure my comments are still scrolling, we're good. All right, so we've got lots of different washi tapes here. I've got this kind of small steps, big dreams, washi tape, which is pretty cute. Um, I've got this cool teal. I've got kind of this mint color, which is pretty. Um, I'm sort of liking this, these dots though, these kind of colored dots. Those look kind of fun next to this color code. Let's go ahead and do that one. Um, there's so many options when it comes to washi tape. Um, oh, I should have brought my scissors over here. I thought I did. I thought I brought my scissors here. Sometimes little hands take things after I put them places and I have to come back and find them. I have lots of little helper hands around here. Let me tell you. All right, here we go. All right, I can't blame helper hands this time. It was my hands that put them somewhere else. Okay, so I just snipped the end of the tape just like about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, like right there. And then I'm going to lift the pocket, lift the edges of the pocket and wrap that underneath. Okay. If you have a paper pocket, this is probably gonna work a little bit better. Mine's fabric and so it's gonna be a little tricky, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift it and tuck it. Now when I lift the pocket, see it's it's not gonna, it's not gonna hit the cover and I can still open the pocket, so that's nice. All right, now I'm just gonna do a few more um, strips right here along this purple edge because I really want to make sure that I get it um, taped right into that pocket so I don't have any lifting every time I open it you know otherwise th this will start to to lift away from your journal you don't want that you want to make sure it's in there nice and securely I've never had a problem with one coming out but I also put a lot of effort into taping them in properly so that they don't come out um, I, it's to me it's just worth the time to do it properly the first time okay. all right there's one more okay trim that trim that okay I think we're good there that's it guys we've got our little edge label here. So now let's go ahead and categorize a couple of my early pages in this 2018 journal and we'll do the flip through for everybody who might be new to the series and I'll show you guys kind of how we've set things up so far and all of the pages I'm going to show you, almost all of them, are available as free printables in, oops, sorry, knocking you guys over, are available as free printables in the Page Slitter Vault, okay? So um, Amy's asking, do I like a certain type of colored pencil? I have Prismacolors and I've been really happy with them. Um, they're nice and soft and they blend easily, but um, that, that also means that when because they're so soft, when you use them in your journal, you also need to be very aware of the fact that they might smear onto the adjacent page. So a lot of times what I end up doing is um, I'll use a really light application and then I go back with a blending pencil, also made by Prismacolor, and blend them out so that um, so that they're they're not gonna wipe off onto the page that's right next to it. So if that makes sense, like I should find one that where that happened. Maybe I didn't blend it very well. Let me find it in this. I think it's in this notebook. Oh, so this year I ended up doing a colored paper adjacent to my um, my year at a glance. That was kind of a neat thing. Hang on, let me find let me find it and see if it's in this one. I don't know. 
what I did with it, which page it's in. Yeah, here it is, 173. See how an index comes ha comes in handy? Um, okay, so I made this like typewriter doodle type thing. I actually traced a graphic that I had purchased through Creative Market for a different purpose, but then I, I really liked it. I love typewriters. I have, ty I have a typewriter. Don't tell my husband, but I actually have three. He doesn't know about one. It's hidden. <laughs> I love typewriters. <laughs> so anyway, um, but so I went ahead and drew this in there and um, I've got, and I originally had a little bit of transferring happening on this page and I erased it so you guys can't see it. But then I went back and I blended it out really well so that I wouldn't get that kind of rubbing off of the turquoise onto the next page from this typewriter. But these are Prismacolors and I just blended them. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, and I'm sorry, I'll get back on track because I told you guys I was gonna finish this edge, edge labeling. So, oops, I knocked you guys over again. I keep hitting this cord and I'm knocking you over. I'm sorry. You guys are gonna get dizzy watching me, right? We're moving, Debbie says. <laughs> Right, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. There, I think we've got you fixed. <laughs> sorry, Tabby. Okay, um, there. So we've got our labels made. Now when we flip back through, I've got, I'm going to actually have to come back in and I'm going to write things in with the page numbers. And then this is the color key that I was talking about that I actually want to make the colors here match the colors that I've used on my card for my edge labels. And that way, when I see a color in my journal, I know what it means. I don't have to guess. So um, Christina says she wants to get an old typewriter. Yeah, I have a Hermes 3000. I have an Olympia SM9, which I'm thinking about selling. I really love it, but my husband's like, one of them's got to go. Come on. <laughs> so, And then I have a Royal Quiet Deluxe, um, like a turquoise -ish turquoise-ish green one. It's kind of that seafoam green with the wrinkle finish. Anyway, I love them. I love them. I just think they're beautiful machines. And I like writing on one. So I hear my little guy. He's calling me. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and do the flip through. And I think I might... Um, well, then go get it. Go get it, honey. And we'll do... Um, yeah, he's usually content to do like a puzzle or a game or something for... Um, an hour or so and then he starts to to lose interest in those and wants me to come play so I better hurry this up all right so I've got a long-term page here that probably needs a label so I'm gonna take the dot that 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 goes with and I'm going to double check that it's the same height and then I'm just going to wrap it around the page so now that page is labeled whether I look at it from this side or the other side okay so same thing with my birthday planner that's also a long-term page so I'm gonna label that one as well. If you have a whole section of pages, you don't always have to label every single one, but at the very beginning of my journal here, I find it handy to label these. Um, and I have lots of stickers, so I'm not worried about running out of stickers. I'm just gonna go ahead and use them. He's playing out there, that's my little guy. I think I'm gonna lose him to preschool soon. I'm sad, it makes me a sad mama. It's 50% sad and 50% excited, I guess, when they go off to school, right? Okay. All right. So um, my recurring tasks is also a long-term page. So the very beginning of my journal is almost all long-term pages. After this, I probably won't have very many of these pink dots. This is probably just going to be my long-term planning section. This one is not really, I'm not going to categorize this one. Um, and then these are just dashboards, so I'm not really going to categorize those. Um, these are goal pages, so um, this has my professional goals on it, so I'm going to label this as blog. Okay. And it's also a long-term planning page, so I'm going to also label it as long-term. You can do that. You can label them as both. Okay. The next one, this is my big project planner. Um, and I can do the flip through again if you guys, if that was too fast, just let me know if you missed something. Um, I know Elizabeth says she was sad when her youngest went to kinder. Uh, now you have so much time. I know, right? That's the thing. And I work from home. So working from home with a little one, like 
I'm sure it sounds really glamorous, right? <laughs> not at all. You guys, it's not glamorous. It's it's a juggling act, but um, you know, we, we make it work. It's good for us, I guess. Okay, so this is my big project planner, so that's gonna be long term. And um yeah, I think I'll just call that long term. So this is really my big bird's eye view of big projects that I'm gonna do throughout the year. So I'm gonna come in here and on this page I fully intend to mix personal projects like family projects and professional projects because that helps me deconflict like if if I'm trying to take on a huge um like kitchen remodel or something while I've got a deadline going on on the blog that I know is going to be a big one that just makes no sense why would I put myself through that so this way I can kind of jot out my goals for the year and try to spread them out so that they're attainable. Otherwise I just get overwhelmed and then nothing gets done and nobody benefits from that. So this is books to read. So this one is our reading and writing page, right? So I'm going to end up covering up a little bit of my doodle there, but that's okay. There's a printable version of that one. Um, that this is the one we made yesterday. There's a printable version of this in the vault for you guys so you can fill in with your own book titles however you want to do it um, and then the next thing that we're going to do tomorrow is I'm going to show you how I'm setting up my January monthly pages so I'm going to go ahead and get January all set up so that in the month of December I can fill all of this in with um, appointments and dates and just migrate those over from my old journal and I'll be all set to go when the new year hits and I'll have my goals ready and I'll have my scheduling ready and there won't be this big shuffle to get into the new journal so I'll have that done while we're also setting that up I know a lot of you guys who are maybe new to journaling were really worried about how the monthly pages and the weekly pages and the dailies how they all work together and how that process works so I'll go ahead and take you through my current journal and walk you through some of those and show you how I use them and how they work. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. So I hope you guys liked this little color code card that we made today. There is a printable version of a flip out card in the vault, um, which it's probably kind of further down. You might have to scroll a little bit to get to it, but, um, this is what it looks like and it's one that I made a while ago and you can just print it out and fill it in with whatever your your keys and your signifiers are um, and then um, I don't have one for the color code mm. but hi but um, you definitely now you know how to make your own so we're good there but if you wanted one for your key and your signifiers Mommy. then you can print that out Mommy. from the vault Mommy. as well so um, yes baby what's up let me turn that you want to say hi all right no, don't touch anything though. Just wave. Hi. No. Thank you. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to turn this around and talk to you guys and see if there are any more questions. If you Do you have any questions about anything that we used today or how I used anything? Please let me know. Hang on. Look out, baby. Let me see. I'm going to check the comments. How old is he? He is four. Just turned four. And I try to keep him off the internet. I don't like my kids on the internet. So um, I try to no. kind of, you know, how the internet is just a weird place. So, so I don't want him on the internet. He's too little for that. And he doesn't, he doesn't understand like the, he doesn't, he doesn't understand all the repercussions of, of being available. So Melissa asked, is this available to watch again? Yes. Melissa, if you go to pageflutter.com in the menu, there's a section called Plan Vember. So every day this month, with the exception of Thanksgiving, um, on the weekdays, I've been recording these videos and then I embed them in a blog post with a list of all the materials that we talked about and you can rewatch it there. And that way you don't have to go scrolling through my Facebook feed looking for it but if you want to get notifications about the future ones then make sure that you like my page and turn on your notifications and then you'll get a notification when I go live and you can hop in and talk with us so um, I think that's it um, yeah he's a good boy Amy he really is so and Paula the printables are in the page flutter vault so if you go to pageflutter.com and you go to the section called the vault that is, it's password protected because I reserve it for my subscribers, but, um, yes, Goofy, I know, I know. Um, so I reserve it for my subscribers. So if you subscribe, you'll get an email that has a password that you can get into the vault and you'll have access to all my free printables. At this time, I don't sell any printables. They're free for you guys. Um, I just... No, Mommy, let me say hi. All right, say hi. 
Hi. <laughs> so I just, um, at this point, I'm, I just want to give them away to you guys for free. That's just sort of He's the way coming. I'm doing business right now. But um, anyhow, so you can access all the printables. And if you have a request for a topic that you would like us to cover, I know I got requests yesterday, and that is going to affect the way that my later videos this week go. Because when people want to see something, I try to adjust my my content and my, my flow to to you know for, for you guys these are supposed to be useful for you so I really want, like hearing from you guys on what you want to see me cover so yeah later this week we'll cover more monthly pages and weekly pages and how those all flow together and hopefully that'll help you guys especially if you're new to the system so make sure you like the page and turn on your notifications so that you'll get the you'll you'll get that when when it's time for us to go live that's it if you guys have any questions you can always email me at Megan at pageflutter.com we got we got child bond today. He came he came to join us. <laughs> so anyway, that's just working from home with kids, right? That's just how it goes. Um, I I could apologize for him, and I probably apologize too often. I'm a mom. I really shouldn't apologize for it. So okay, I hope you guys had fun. I had fun talking to you. If you have any questions, email me Megan at pageflutter.com. You can drop me a comment down below. Make sure you share this with your friends, and that's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 10:30 Central, right here. Bye. No.